So for this particular script, change color is going to randomly assign a color to the sprite renderer. What this means is that on every update, or we can call it fixed update to make sure it doesn't become too ridiculous. So what this means is on every update or fixed update, we can just get reference to the sprite renderer, take the color of it, and set it to a randomly assigned RGB color. In order to create such a script, we're only going to need private void awake and private void update. If you care about exactly how many times it gets called per frame, you could also do fixed update. By the way, if you're wondering how many times fixed update actually will call per second, it's depending on what you have set in your game. If you're wondering about how many times fixed update gets called or how you can change the amount of times the fixed update gets called, you can go to the edit menu inside of the Unity editor, go up to project settings and then time, and you can see fixed time step here. So this is set to 0.02 seconds, which means 50 times per second, whatever is in fixed update would get called. So if you want to double that and you want this to run 100 times a second, you could just cut the time step in half. So this would be 100 times because uh, 100 times 0 0.01 equals 1. Or you could also reduce it to something like 0 0.05 where it would get called 20 times a second. Uh, but So that means that the default is in fact 50 times per second for a fixed update. So for this method, I guess we'll just use the update method, which means it'll get called as many times as frames happen inside of our unit project. But in order to change the color, we need to first get reference to the sprite renderer. So you can see on this robot game object, we have a sprite renderer attached here, but the script doesn't know anything about that. So in order to get reference to that, the common way is going to be to first declare a sprite renderer variable. So sprite renderer, and we can call this uh, sprite renderer. Now, whether you set it public or not here is going to largely depend on if you want this to be set inside of the Unity editor, because any, uh, any public variable that you set inside of a mono behavior script is going to be serialized to the Unity editor and to show up here. And if we set these variables to public, they automatically show up as soon as we save the script. So if we wait here for a second, it should pop up with a field where we can actually set reference to the sprite renderer. You can see that here right now. So one way to get reference to the sprite renderer, of course, is to make this variable public and drag it in. Uh, for right now, we'll just leave that as our option, keeping it really simple here. So we're using the robot sprite renderer in order to change its value in this script. If you're wondering why this value is black here, well, it's because uh, this robot has a prefab object in our project, and this value actually is different from what's ever in the prefab. So if I check the prefab, uh, you can see there's not even a script here for the color change. So if we want this script and this bright renderer to exist on the prefab, basically where, whenever we copy this robot to the scene, we can just go ahead and hit apply up here. So that basically takes this change and makes it permanent across all robots that don't have their own overridden values. Since we've set the sprite renderer inside of the uh, Unity editor, we simply need to make sure that that sprite renderer still exists. And then we can reference the color and change it on every frame. So we need to make sure the sprite renderer is set. So if sprite renderer um, does not equal null, then we know it has been set. So it's been set. And now we can do sprite renderer dot color is going to equal a new value. And this new value, I want to set it in several parts. I don't want this code to all go on one line because that'll be hard to read. So we will do color uh, new color. And that's going to be equal to a new color instance. So this new color that we're creating, it's going to need three variables. Or you could also set four. The fourth one would be alpha, but we don't actually care about alpha right now. So if I recall, we can set this as a value between 0 and 1, 1 where it would have full value for that color, and 0 where there would not be any of that color at all. And the colors are red, green, blue, I believe as well. So we just need to get three random values. So we can actually call the C sharp standard library of random.value, which you can see gives us a value between 0 and 1.0. 
Okay, and uh, that's actually a property reference, so we don't need to have the parentheses there. I think this works. I'm actually not 100% sure if this is going to return um, the same random value or if it'll return three different random values. So we'll have to test that and see if that works. So sprite renderer.color is going to be equal to the new color. Pretty simple here. And that's going to be it for the script. Um, now, just to point out one other good way of getting reference to the sprite renderer, if you don't want it to be manually set by the user, what you could do instead would be to do sprite renderer equals git component sprite render. And what this means is that when the script awakes in the game, when the game object exists and the script is attached to it, it's going to automatically find the sprite renderer component on the game object and it's going to set the sprite renderer variable equal to that. So by doing that, we could actually just change this to private and the editor, the game designer, wouldn't even need to set the sprite renderer. Now you would want to make sure that the sprite renderer actually exists on your game object. So you could do one of these, a require component sprite renderer or type of sprite renderer. And by doing this, when you actually attach the change color script to the game object, it's going to automatically add a sprite renderer to that game object if it doesn't already exist. By doing that, it's a lot harder for someone designing your game object to forget about adding the sprite renderer when they add this change color script. This, by the way, if you don't know, is called a attribute, and there are a lot of attributes in Unity which you can get useful functionality out of um, in ways like this with require component. So this script should be pretty crazy, and uh, because I made the variable private, you should see uh, it disappear from the inspector. So whoever is working in the inspector doesn't need to worry anymore about this because uh, it will automatically get reference to the sprite render. Now, if you have multiple sprite renderers on your object, then obviously you probably want to specify exactly which one you want. And in that case, you want, might want to make it public again uh, so that you don't accidentally grab the wrong sprite renderer. Either that, or you could get get components and store all of the sprite renderers inside of your code file. Uh, but that's getting a little too involved for right now. So let's actually just go test this crazy script. Um, so what should happen is that on every frame, the color changes to something completely wild. So let's give this a shot. Okay, awesome. So we now have a seizure inducing robot that is changing color on every frame. Uh, and that was all done by just getting reference to the sprite renderer, attaching our change color script, and making it run on every single frame. Kind of reminds me of the star effect inside of Mario. You might actually want to slow this down a bit too.